All right, so today's video is going to be my entire philosophy on barbells. I've been thinking about it quite a bit because when I first started this channel, I had these similar ideas, and obviously they've they've refined a little bit as the time has gone on, but so has my communication. And I think with myself having the channel for a little bit longer now, I can communicate and gather my thoughts a little bit better. I figured I'm going to revisit some of these ideas that maybe I've dabbled on with the channel, but I do want to bring some new ideas to you guys and overall have it in a little bit more of a structured and refined uh, method. So let me dive into a little bit of an intro for this video. This is probably going to be the longest video that I have based on all the notes and the quotes that I have here. So let's not waste any time. Let's get to it. So this is an intro and, and somewhat of a disclaimer, more so food for thought. So barbells have the reputation of being the best piece of equipment for hypertrophy. I could sit here and say the cliche, every lift is a tool in the toolbox, but while there's some truth to it, that quote doesn't help us very much. So barbells are a great piece of equipment for bodybuilders and can 100% be used successfully to build muscle, as we've seen with a lot of natural bodybuilders. I do see some issues with barbell training as well. For those of you that have been following the channel for a while, you know that uh, you have to read between the lines to fully understand most of my points. For those of you who are new to the channel, you'll notice that throughout this video, most of my issues with barbells are going to be either mental, emotional, or social, and that the physical issues with barbell training aren't as big of a deal. They just need to be programmed and used mindfully, which a lot of the time they aren't, as you'll hear in this video. My goal here isn't to fearmonger you out of using barbells. My goal is to provide you with an understanding of common misconceptions with barbell training so you can use, so you can use barbells properly or try another training approach that might work better for you. So this channel is about my experience with uh, the fitness community, my own personal experience, my own experience training other people with the same mindset as myself and with the same goals as myself. So. This video isn't going to be me fear-mongering anybody out of using barbells. That's definitely not the point. The purpose of my channel and the purpose of this video, but in general, my channel, is to provide you with, uh, I guess, the disclaimers of what barbell use and power building would be because a lot of people do it improperly. And I want to make sure that you guys who are actually training for hypertrophy don't get brainwashed into another method of training just because more more people like it because it's trendy or because uh, you're chasing someone else's goal that gets pushed on you. So my goal as a channel and my goal here is to help you guys understand the type of training that you're going to do so you actually do it properly and you don't end up like I did. Um, and if you don't know by now, basically, I started off training for hypertrophy, made great progress. I made a ton of gains, pretty much like made the best gains I possibly could, got really big really quickly, uh, obviously 100% naturally. And then I, for whatever reason, just moved into power building and my gains stalled, but my strength kept going up. Eventually I ditched that idea, got burned out of training and went back into hypertrophy training, which is when I was making my last good gains and I've continued to make progress. I put on just about an inch on my arms in just over a year of training since about spring of 2021. So, um, my goal is to give you guys a lot of the experience with uh, some of the pros of the methods that I use and some of the cons of uh, the mental, the emotional, and social aspect when it comes to barbell training or the big three or power building in general. As you guys know, barbells, they're the gold standard in a lot of people's eyes. They have the best reputation in the bodybuilding community or in the fitness industry in general. And it's not necessarily for a bad reason, but they're definitely overrated and they're a lot of the time used improperly. So what I wanna dive into now is why barbells have that reputation. The most jacked non-bodybuilders are strength athletes, for example, powerlifters or Olympic weightlifters, and barbells make up a lot of their training. The reason I exclude bodybuilders is because of the extreme PD use and the disproportionately smaller sample size in terms of hobbyists compared to competitors. Most bodybuilding shows are untested and the few that are, aren't 100% reliable, as we all know. Preparing to compete in a bodybuilding show is something that doesn't intrigue many hobbyist bodybuilders, myself included, because of the br uh, brutally difficult diet that comes with negative health effects, as well as what the sport is anyway, which is 95% naked on a stage, oiled up with a fake tan. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, but we just have to accept that that's not that appealing for a whole ton of people, even if you are super jacked and could go out and win a local show. 
when you compare that to what a power lifter does to prep, it's easy to see why hobbyist power lifters compete far more than hobbyist bodybuilders. And when it comes to PEDs, the best bodybuilders are typically the best because of PEDs, not because of their training, which leads them to become totally different from a natural hobbyist bodybuilder, and therefore any training information we get from them must be taken with a grain of salt at the very least. Lots of the best natural bodybuilders are typically hobbyists that are only known locally, like kids that we went to school with or friends that we have or something, just guys that we know at the gym that don't even have social media, or even guys that just train at their house. Um, and those people typically don't compete in bodybuilding. And when most of us are never, uh, and when most of us are never going to compete, bodybuilding isn't even necessarily the best way to look at the people who have the most muscle because it's a competition of leanness more than it is muscle mass. So now that we've established that for natural bodybuilders, we don't really have that many people to actually compare our training to and see what the best way to train really is. So it's up to us to experiment and kind of philosophize what would ultimately be best for us. When it comes to natural bodybuilding, there aren't very many people to look up to. There's not like a, a huge mass of people natural bodybuilding. And even, even if there are people doing it, uh, the shows nobody talks about, nobody, there's no like famous natural bodybuilders or, or natural bodybuilding studies that get cited all the time that are done properly. So with the lack of comparison and information we have with natural bodybuilding, what people do is they just go to the next best thing, which is the most jacked non bodybuilders, which is going to be natural powerlifting because it's prevalent on social media. They all have big followings. It's cool to see people lift big weights. And obviously that's, that's totally fine. And that's cool. I respect powerlifting a ton. Uh, but there are issues because when we try and say, all right, well, what's the next best thing? We're kind of missing the point and actually discovering what's truly best for us. And while barbells aren't a bad way to train because they're actually a good way to train. You can make great muscular gains on them. We start to use them improperly for a, a multitude of reasons that I do want to dive into throughout this video. The next part of my philosophy is that other methods of hypertrophy training have completely untapped potential. And I don't even think we're close to what we could actually hit with some of this stuff. So you see barbell training, and I'd argue that let's say you take barbell training and, and you have one category barbells and then the next category is going to be alternatives whether it's machines dumbbells cables say you have these two different categories when you take the barbells uh, when people train with both what happens is the barbells get completely biased the barbell lifts are always first there's always that strive for progression and I, I do think that we unnecessarily force progression when it's not needed at all. And I think we sacrifice uh, hypertrophy fundamentals in the meantime. But at least at least there's some type of progression there. It's, it's, a, it's better to force progression than to not try and progress at all. The, those are two very different things. I don't think they're neither. Neither of those are great ways to train. But at least when you're forcing something, you're going to get something out of it. You're just it comes with a lot of downsides that I talked about before on the channel. On the other side of the spectrum, let's say you have your, your dumbbell, your cable, your machine work. It's oftentimes referred to as accessory work. And even just that word, it grinds my gears. I hate that word. So you take accessory work or any isolation lift for that matter, and they get half-assed. So this is the other extreme. Instead of driving progression through the roof and forcing it as much as you possibly can at completely unnecessarily, by the way, that's, that's not the right way to bodybuild when you have the other side where you're just kind of half-assing it nowhere close to failure when you should be taking those lifts even closer to if not to failure or even past failure with some advanced techniques you're not going to get anything out of that so that led to barbells like yeah we're not using them to progress properly but at least you're getting something that leads us to think that barbells are superior simply because you see some type of progression the problem is we have to kind of combine the two methods. We can't be as conservative as we are with our non-barbell lifts, and we're, we're overly liberal with our barbell lifts. And the, neither of those are a good thing. It should be the other way around. And I think that's the reason why we don't have as much success as we should when it comes to natural bodybuilding. When we look at the anecdotal evidence, the best physiques compared to bodybuilders are powerlifters. Just because they're the next best in terms of physique, does that mean that their training is optimal for hypertrophy? I'd say no. They're just the closest because hypertrophy is going to be a more common side effect uh, due to the amount of resistance training that they do relative to any other athlete in any given sport. 
this leads me uh, this leads me to my next point which is the fact that nobody competes in machine or isolation work so my philosophy is we have an untapped potential in those movements machines are designed to build muscle and the potential for volume with minimal fatigue and the similar progression to barbells makes them an excellent choice for hypertrophy the problem is that the potential remains untapped at least in my opinion so this pretty much sums up my point well here we nobody takes machines as seriously nobody takes dumbbells as seriously or cables as seriously as they do uh their barbells and what ends up happening is you kind of try and get a pump or mind muscle connection and while those aren't necessarily bad things they're not going to drive hypertrophy as much as it feels like it's going to so what happens is you start to realize that that isn't working the problem is it's not the exercise selection the problem is the effort level and the mentality we're not focusing where we need to focus and we're applying we're we're top heavy with barbells is what i'm trying to say here and part of the reason why that potential remains untapped is because there's not as much uh standardization when it comes to non-barbell lifts barbells they're all 45 pounds and they're all seven feet long like that's just what a barbell is very standardized it can be a crappy barbell it can be a great barbell but at the end of the day a barbell is a barbell unless it's some type of specialty bar like for deadlift or something so when it comes to machines or cables or whatever it ends up being that's not a barbell the reason why we don't have uh as high of a ceiling as or we, the reason why we haven't reached that ceiling yet is because of the lack of standardization every machine is engineered a little bit differently so we don't have that uh that standard and that universality that we can all look to like a barbell and that's one of the good things about barbells however there are drawbacks to it as i'm sure you can tell based on my philosophies so when it comes to standardization obviously barbells good thing for the most part it helps it helped barbells get uh their reputation but at the same time it's hiding the potential that machines or non-barbell lifts whether it's compound isolation machine cable dumbbell whatever uh, it's part of the reason why those lifts have untapped potential and why we're leaving a lot of good programming and a lot of really good gains on the table unfortunately so when it comes to standardization and accessibility with barbells so the standards there's ego lifting and then strength distractions with barbells this has been overlooked in recent years the pendulum has, the pendulum has swung the other way into helping lifters who aren't training hard enough but the lifters who want to get big that get carried away by powerlifting or power building still exist and that's primarily who my channel's for if you can't tell already so chasing unnecessary prs is the death of bodybuilding as i've talked about before on the channel it's common for lifters to either think that they need to constantly progress linearly forever because they believe in strength standards which i will have a video on soon it's in the making and they start to sacrifice hypertrophy fundamentals to do so because they think strength is the end-all be-all strength has its place but it's largely misinterpreted when it comes to hypertrophy this typically leads to changing technique to optimize output at the expense of range of motion or targeting the target muscle or in some cases lifters just getting fat when they plateau to keep chasing an arbitrary strength standard or unnecessarily fast progression this mindset is the beginning of the end for lifters training for hypertrophy commonly resulting in plateaus followed by burnout and i do want to touch on one of the pros of barbells that can help a certain demographic of lifters so uh one thing that they can help with is they they can almost be like a and i know i touched on this earlier but they can almost be like a savior to people that are training in a super kind of weak or like bro style method like pump or mind muscle connection focus 100 percent isolation lifts or just machines um and obviously those people are, are going to make very limited progress and there are certain benefits that barbells have to those people and it can get your back on the right track when it comes to hypertrophy training at least in the short term so the 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 big three in particular are similar similar variations to it these can help push people who aren't training hard enough the reason for this is because you aren't um you don't need to go quite to muscular failure with these lifts to actually see muscular growth it's actually a bad idea to take these to failure or even very close to it um, for for the most part for most people so with these you don't need to be as strong as a power lifter but there are some benefits to knowing where you fall strength wise relative to other lifters so part of the the standardization of these is sometimes it's a good idea to know where you fall relative to other lifters 
I think one of the biggest fallacies is going to be strength standards, like I touched uh, touched on earlier in the video. And I'll obviously, as I said earlier, I'll have a video on it. But sometimes it's good to have an actual assessment of how strong am I compared to other people? Because I'm not saying that with a strength standard, like, oh, you have a big chest when you hit 225 for five on bench. Like, that's simply just not the case. Um, will it be bigger than when you're benching 135 for five? Sure. Will it be where you want it to be? Who knows? You Who knows? It depends on the path that you take to that number and obviously some genetics and how you train, obviously. So um, it is good to have some standardization to at least compare yourself in a very general sense to other people. Um, and that's very, very general. You don't want to get too tied up in that because everybody's everybody takes different paths to certain strength standards and they're typically used improperly. Uh, if someone is a pump or mind muscle connection type bro who is afraid of failure and just chases the pump, at least the big three can build you muscle without being too close to failure. So that would be a good option for them to try, at least in the short term. My next point is that it's commonly said that barbells teach lifters how to train hard. And while in certain cases that is true, the opposite can also be true. Compound barbell lifts, let's say the big three, just to be specific here, that are dip, um, those lifts are typically difficult and uncomfortable. But when someone isn't training hard enough, exercise selection is not the issue. The issue is effort and proximity to failure and using lifts that you can take close to failure or to failure or even past it will teach proximity to failure and effort level to lifters that need it. The big three lifts and similar variations may be uncomfortable, but it's more of a systemic challenge than it is a challenge to the target muscle. Lifters who don't train close enough to failure need to get comfortable with both, but more so muscular failure than systemic failure or fatigue. So this is a little bit of a misconception. And obviously there's benefits to having people who don't train it hard enough to use barbells. It, there are some benefits to it and it can teach people how to train hard. The big three, they're uncomfortable lifts and a lot of people shy away from them because they're, uh, they're uncomfortable. But if someone isn't, if someone's afraid to train hard and then you just move them into the big three, they're still not going to train hard. Like they're just going to stop that many reps earlier on the big three than something else. So when you take the systemic uncomfortableness of the big three, that's going to teach that person a couple things. And it will say, all right, well, this is what it's like to get uncomfortable. The problem is you're teaching them the wrong type of uncomfortable. You're teaching them uh, systemic fatigue and systemic um, issues like running out of breath, your heart rate going up, having to use your whole body on a squat or deadlift, but you're not quite teaching them what they truly need to know, especially for long-term success, which is muscular fatigue and taking a muscle close to failure and the pain that that kind of brings you. So while the big three have their benefits with that, the, the true underlying issue is they're afraid to take a muscle to muscular failure and that needs to be addressed as soon as possible if someone's training for hypertrophy. The next point here, and this is, this is the next chapter here, this is the emotional attachment and the dogmatism when it comes to barbells and the big three. So uh, when, when I say barbells, that doesn't mean like a barbell skull crusher or curl. This is heavier, more so full body compound lifts, like a, a barbell row, overhead press, and the big three, stuff like that excuse me, is primarily what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, barbells in this video. So emotional attachment and dogmatism. Let's get to it. The first point that I have here is going to be that it's easy to get attached to numbers and attached to strength standards. And this will completely distract you from hypertrophy training. When you have a specific number in mind, and you're chasing that number, it's it's easy to get greedy. And that's something that's going to basically override your hypertrophy training. If you have in your head that hitting a an arbitrary strength standard, like a three plate bench or something, is going to bring you a, a bigger chest, it's kind of just a fallacy. And I'm not saying if you're benching, so if you're benching 225 now, and you bring your bench to 315, are you going to be bigger? 100%. There's really no way around that. But what ends up happening is we start to just uh, tunnel vision on that end goal and how can we get there as fast as we can to get that result. The issue with this is that when you have that tunnel vision, you don't have the peripheral vision seeing what you need to see, which is the path that you take towards that goal. 
and that being the more important part of achieving that goal. The reason that we like to set strength standards in the first place is to bring us a number and bring us something, something factual in our head that we can achieve and associate with the side effect goal that we're trying to achieve. The problem with that is that not all strength standards are created equally. Two people can hit a 315 bench, and for one person, maybe their chest isn't any bigger, and for the other person, maybe they did it properly and they focused more on the path there than the end goal, and that person actually got some chest gains out of that uh, run and, that, and out of that training. So what happens is, so you set a strength standard, you set a strength goal, and what happens is a lot of the time we lose sight of why we set the goal in the first place and we sacrifice the fundamentals that we need to actually see the result when we get there in order to just hit the goal that no longer means anything. And when you lose sight of why you set the goal, the goal is useless now. And that happens to a lot of power builders. And that's why a lot of people that train for hypertrophy go into power building, even power lifting. And that's kind of what I did myself, and I lost sight of the goal. And sure enough, what happened? I didn't get any bigger. I went on, I would gain extra fat just to bulk up. I would widen my grip on bench. I went to a low bar squat. And I was like, all right, well, as long as I hit these numbers, I'm guaranteed to be bigger at least. But that's not the right way to think because as soon as you set that goal and you go tunnel vision on it, like I said a minute ago, now, now you're screwed because you, it's not the end goal. It's the path to the goal that matters most. The next point I have here is peaking phases and strength blocks are a waste of time. Obviously, I just had a video on strength blocks, but what ends up happening, this is a more specific example of being tunnel visioned on a specific strength standard, is what happens is you say, okay, well, at a 315 bench, I'll have a big chest. I'm at 300 now, so what could I do? I could take a deload and see if I can max out and hit the 315 and have a bigger chest. That's one that I don't think many people make that mistake, but... More realistically, I'm at 295. Let me take uh, two months to go on a strength block and just build up my chest to a 315. But the problem is, that's not hypertrophy training. You might be building more uh, strength and coordination, technique refinement. You're focusing on heavier uh, weight, so higher intensity, lower reps. And obviously, you're going to build a little bit more strength to that, especially when you set a strength standard of a one rep max on a big three lift. There's so many variables that... If you aren't zoomed out and looking at the bigger picture and you're being humble and taking it slow and focusing on hypertrophy uh, fundamentals, you're going to lose sight and you're going to, let's say, hit that goal, but you might not be getting the result that you want out of hitting that goal. And the next one is typically going to be an issue that I see a lot of the time with like the younger guys. So this is going to be the frequent need to deload or just getting burned out in general. So what happens is a lot of the younger guys that go right into power building because they can't decide what they want. They're, they're greedy and they want everything. Like teenagers and guys in their early 20s, are they're like this. It's 100% true. Um, and what happens is you, have to you either have to say, all right, well, I am going to commit to deloading and they're going to train hard and they're going to put everything they have on the table in their training. And if they do that, they're going to have to deload very frequently, probably every three, four, maybe five weeks. And what happens there is you miss out on accumulated volume. If you're somebody that trains that hard and you say, whatever, I'm not going to deload, like, let's be real, most power building teenagers don't actually do. A lot of the time, they just end up getting burned out and taking a lot of time off of lifting or just quitting lifting in general. It's not a sustainable plan. It's very short term thinking. So what happens is either either way you're going to miss out on volume accumulation. If you're somebody that, let's say, you, let's say you do it probably the more smart way where you deload every fourth week, now you're missing out on 25% of the volume that you could be getting in. And over, over a, an eight week period, does that matter? Probably not that much. Is that gonna show up on a nine week study, a 15 week study? Probably not. Is that gonna show up over the next five or 10 years of your training? I'd have to say yes, because long term, like if you train for four years and every fourth week you deload, that's an entire year of training that you're missing out on. Am I saying you're not going to make any progress because there is a year missing? Of course not. But are you leaving 10, 15, maybe 20% of the gains on the table? I'd say probably yes. So that's my point when it comes to frequent deloads. The next point that I have here is the accessory lift downfall, which leads to a mindset shift focusing too much on strength carryover. Um, 
arms are now useless, you don't need to train abs directly. The lifts that matter most are the big barbell lifts, the heavy ones you do at the start of the workout. And that that's basically a, a big issue because what happens is when your lift inevitably starts to slow down or plateau, you start to say, all right, well, do I really need to do pec deck or could I just do another bench press accessory? Should I be, do, should I be doing overhead tricep work when the long head doesn't contribute that much to the bench press or should I just do uh, more push downs or should I be doing more JM press or something that builds the lateral head or pressing strength to help out with my pressing strength so I can get that number. So you see how this starts to defeat its own purpose. Um, I've touched on that quite a bit, but I don't think I need to go too much deeper into that. But what happens is now you say, all right, well, overhead tricep work, probably not as good as um, shortened position tricep work to help the bench press a little bit more. Same thing with like bicep training. Do I really need to allocate all that time and energy to bicep training when it doesn't carry you over to anything? Probably not. What about lats? Probably not that important. Um, how can I maximize my squat and how can I minimize everything else in my leg training volume? Like you see how this starts to kind of tear apart a fundamentally sound hypertrophy training program. And now that I've concluded a lot of the mental, the socially emotional aspects of my barbell training philosophy, I do want to dive into some of the physical applications of my barbell philosophy. And the first one's going to be uh, a versatility, which is a little bit of a fallacy. So versatility, this is a pro but it's also the biggest mis misinterpretation that I see that nobody talks about. It's commonly said that barbells are the best piece of equipment for hypertrophy training. When someone says barbells are king or barbells are the best, it's because of accessibility and universality. It's a one-size-fits-all approach. This doesn't actually mean that barbells will objectively build more muscle than dumbbells, weighted calisthenics, or machines. Barbells are just more universal and accessible. This is essentially just saying barbells are more practical because they apply to a wider audience, but objectively speaking, they aren't superior to every other method like you hear. And this is something that happens a lot where you have somebody, let's say a big YouTuber that's just trying to appeal to appeal to the masses and get the most views. They're going to tell you that barbells are the best because they're universal, because they apply to most of their audience. And whether this person has good intentions or not, it doesn't really matter because they're saying, all right, well, how can I help the most people? Most people have access to a barbell. Every, every gym besides, actually besides Planet Fitness has a barbell in it. So it's something that's universal that we can all use and it applies to everybody. Therefore, I can help the most people. At the same time, if someone's like, oh, well, I just want to get the most views or, or relate to the most people to get clicks and whatnot, I can just talk more about barbells because we all have access to it and more people will watch my videos. So regardless of intention of that person, it's easy for people that have a big following to say barbells are the best because it applies to most people that consume their content. And I think this, this gets misconstrued with the fact of, uh, or the, the myth of barbells being the best. So what, what happens is somebody says barbells are the best, meaning they apply to the most people. So they're, they're probably the best for everybody. But the issue is they're not objectively better compared to other methods. It's just more practical because more people have access to it. My next point is going to be that beginners, when, you, when you're put on a beginner program that's primarily going to be barbells, what happens a lot of the time, unless you're like a genetic freak or have training experience and not a true beginner, is what happens, the strength gains come very quickly because there's a much bigger learning curve to barbells than there are to other pieces of equipment. So beginners will see biased gains towards strength primarily using barbells and this is discouraging for people looking for growth this is something that you see a lot of the time beginners you see it on like not that i'm on reddit that much but i've um i'll, I'll probably have a video on that at some point too actually but basically i was on reddit and there was somebody asking for they wanted to be bigger primarily they wanted bigger arms and the response that got the most likes was somebody telling them to get a bigger deadlift they're saying, just build up your deadlift and bench. Don't worry about arm training. That will grow your arms the best. So when people are looking to get bigger overall and people that are beginners, they, they want to see results pretty quick because obviously that ensures that they're doing things right. And it also builds the habit of them actually coming back to the gym. So it's pretty important to get beginners results pretty quickly. And I know that's an unpopular opinion because everybody wants to build a base and get bigger squat, bench, and deadlifts and get beginners super strong, but not put that much muscle on them. Um, 
this is very discouraging for beginners because you're going to see very rapid strength gains and they'll say, all right, well, I'm doing some things right. Strength gains are going through the roof, but they don't get that much bigger. And obviously that's going to be an issue. So we need to get beginners training with probably some more dumbbells. Those are always great. A little bit of machines mixed in there because it, there's a much quicker learning curve. Is it going to take a couple weeks to learn how to like leg press and use a chest press machine properly or a lat pull down? 100%, but is that person going to learn those machines quicker than they're, they're going to learn how to squat bench deadlift? 100%. And will those machines get them much quicker results in terms of muscular growth than the big three lifts? I agree with that too, 100%. So I'm not going to go too deep into that. I'll probably save the rest of that for another video. But if you watch through the whole thing, I appreciate your support. Let me know if you have any questions or anything. And with that being said, that's it for today.